Well, yet again, President Trump is being called a racist, this time for failing in the minds of people like Representative James Clyburn, failing to show sufficient respect for the passing of civil rights icon John Lewis. Never mind President Trump promptly tweeted about his death. Never mind Trump ordered the flags to be flown at half staff. As far as Clyburn is concerned, not enough. Meanwhile, Joe Biden has lied repeatedly for decades about his alleged civil rights record and other things having to do with race, and he gets a pass. First, the allegation that Trump is insufficiently respectful to John Lewis. And this president uh, has demonstrated time and time again that he has very low regards for people of color. It's just that simple. If you don't rent your apartment to a person of color, if you go out and try to organize uh, judicial activities against innocent people of color, if you look in a camera and refer to an African-American woman as a dog, this man has a very low regard for people of color. Is Trump supposed to forget the horrific things that Lewis said about him? This was last year in a Rolling Stone interview. About impeachment, he said, quote, bring everything to the front and be willing and be prepared to take action. During the civil rights movement, we would be beaten in jail. Some of us left for dead. We all said, pace yourself, pace yourself. And I still believe that today. You take the long, hard look and believe you're consistent and persistent. We can work it out and we will work it out, end of quote. So he's comparing the impeachment of Donald Trump to the civil rights movement and it gets worse. We need a president, a leader of the national government who's not a racist. Trump is a racist, end of quote. One of the worst things, of course, you can call anybody in America today is a racist. And 83% because of accusations like this of Democrats believe that Donald Trump is a racist. As far as I'm concerned, Donald Trump's failure to show sufficient respect in the minds of people like Clyburn just says Donald Trump is not a phony. And I doubt, frankly, that John Lewis's family wanted him there anyway. You remember, John McCain's family did not want <laughs> Donald Trump there. And I believe John McCain even wrote instructions to that effect. So please. Speaking of phony, meanwhile, Joe Biden has told lie after lie after lie about his alleged civil rights record. And as far as the media are concerned, I came out of the civil rights movement. I was one of those guys that sat in and marched and all that stuff. Oh, and about that civil rights movement, Biden claims it's been long and proud. When I was 17, I participated in sit-ins to desegregate restaurants and movie houses. And my stomach turned upon hearing the voices of Faubus and Wallace. My soul raged upon seeing Bull Connor and his dogs. And the Baltimore Sun says, as a young man, he took part in sit-ins to desegregate restaurants along US 40 in Delaware. Biden, 1987, California Democrat Convention. When I was 17, I participated in sit-ins to desegregate restaurants and movie houses of Wilmington, Delaware. Biden, December 6, 2019. Well, I got my education in the black church because when we used to get organized on Sundays to go out and desegregate movie theaters and things like that, we do it through the black church. Well, move over Rosa Parks, here comes Joe Biden. Well, I got my education, Reverend Doc, in the black church. Not a joke. Because when we used to get organized on Sundays to go out and desegregate movie theaters and things like that, we'd do it through the black church. When I marched in the civil rights movement, I did not march with a 12-point program. I marched with tens of thousands of others. When I was 17 years old, like many of you, I participated in sit-ins to desegregate the restaurants and movie houses of Wilmington, Delaware. I was no big shakes, Reverend, in the civil rights. I was just a kid. I got involved in desegregated movie theaters and helping, some, you may remember, Reverend Boyer in Delaware and Herman Holloway organized voter registration drives, coming out of black churches on Sunday, figuring how we were going to move. But that ain't what the New York Times said, as CNN's Jake Tapper reminds us. And the New York Times reports, quote, more than once, advisors had gently reminded Mr. Biden of the problem with this formulation. He had not actually marched during the civil rights movement. And more than once, Mr. Biden assured them that he understood and kept telling the story anyway. Are you not, in fact, a chronic and habitual liar? 
Oh, there's more. Biden, for example, recently claimed that the NAACP has endorsed him every single time he's run. Take a look at my record, man. I extended the voting racks 25 years. I have a record that is second to none. The NAACP has endorsed me every time I've run. One side problem, no, the NAACP has not endorsed Joe Biden and never has. Here's the statement they put out after he made the claim. Yesterday, former VP Joe Biden made a comment about the NAACP's endorsement. We want to clarify, the NAACP is a nonpartisan organization and does not endorse candidates for political office at any level, end of quote. And then there's the Nelson Mandela whopper. This day, 30 years ago, Nelson Mandela walked out of prison and entered into discussions about apartheid. I had the great honor of meeting him. I had the great honor of being arrested with our UN ambassador on the streets of Soweto trying to get to see him on Robbins Island. When he came to the United States, when he came to the White House, to the Senate, I was chairman of the committee and he walked in. The most incredible thing I've ever felt in my life. He walked across in that private room with the big table we have in the, in the executive room. And he walked over and I said, Mr. President, he leaned I said, thank you. Thank you for trying to come and see me. <laughs> no. Biden was not arrested while attempting to visit Nelson Mandela as Mandela was in prison, as this left-winning fact-check organization Snopes tells us. First, Biden claimed to have been arrested along with Ambassador Andy Young. But in February, Young told both the New York Times and the Washington Post that he himself had never been arrested in South Africa, and he said that he did not think Biden was either. Second, Biden said he was arrested on the streets of Soweto, this claim appears utterly implausible since Soweto, a township of South Africa's largest city, Johannesburg, is located nearly 900 miles northeast of Robben Island, which is off the coast of Cape Town and where Nelson Mandela was imprisoned. The two locations are effectively on opposite ends of the country, end of quote. Biden, you see, has had a long and cozy relationship with the race card. Remember what he said at this ethnically diverse crowd about what Mitt Romney wanted to do about Wall Street. He's going to let the big banks once again write their own rules. Unchain Wall Street. They're going to put you all back in chains. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then there's Joe Biden keeping it real with Reverend Al about Republicans and how they don't want black people voting. You realize just this past year, in 24 states, the administration's allies have, have, have introduced 60 pieces of legislation, or maybe 70 pieces of legislation, to curtail the franchise. Look, this is what these guys are all about, man. Yeah. Man. These Republicans don't want working class people voting. They don't want black folks voting. Amen, brother. Amen. It's good, too. <laughs> and then there's the goat. That is greatest of all time. But I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. You see, this shows you that Biden sees black people as props, as emotional tools. Make an emotional appeal. Tell them how much you care about black people. Make false claims about Mandela. Make false claims about the NAACP. And for God's sake, lie for decades about your alleged civil rights record. And they'll respond because that's how black people are. Never mind the Democratic Party does not want to give inner city parents choice in school, which polls show they want, and polls show white Democrats do not. Never mind Democrats are the party of the poorest borders, and economist George Borjas from Harvard probably has done more work on the impact of legal and illegal immigration than maybe anybody else. He says there are winners and losers with illegal immigration, and there's no question that one of the losers are unskilled black and brown workers who have to compete with unskilled illegal aliens for jobs, and the unskilled illegal aliens' presence allows them to put downward pressure on wages. And of course, this is the party that pushes bad economic policies like jacking up the minimum wage, like requiring licensing for do, to do things like cut hair. And don't forget, this is the party that for decades has launched a so-called war on poverty where women have been incentivized to marry the government and men have been incentivized to abandon their financial and moral responsibility. But hey, Joe Biden tried to visit Nelson Mandela. Now, don't forget to check out my movie Uncle Tom 
Just go to UncleTom.com and be the first in your hood to get you some Uncle Tom merch. I am Larry Elder, and we've got a country to save. And I'll see you next time.